This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, here's something I've never done before. I am going to rank all 22 electrical engineering courses I took in college. For those who don't know, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, located here. And I graduated back in 2015, so it has been a while. Don't remember everything, but I think I remember enough for this video. So let's get to it. In dead last, this. Computer Design and Assembly Language Programming. This was technically a computer engineering class that all electrical engineers had to take. And all I remember from this class is getting a 50% on the midterm, being surprised it wasn't lower, and doing assembly language programming, which I hated. I thought it was super boring. It's like really low level programming. So it's not where you build games and apps and stuff like that. A lot of people really like this class. I did not. In 21st place, Energy Conversion Electromagnetics. Now this was another 200 level class. 200 means most people took it their second year, 300, third year, and so on. Uh, and this was really my one and only power engineering class where we worked with high voltage circuits. So in the lab, the voltages we worked with were in the hundreds of volts as opposed to like five volts in most of the other classes. And we learned like how induction motors worked and things like that. It was kind of a mix of mechanical and electrical engineering and it just wasn't for me. Now, skipping around a bit so that the explanations make a little more sense, in 19th place is Circuit Analysis 1, which was my first circuit analysis class. It was just resistor circuits with DC inputs, uh, and we learned how to find you know, voltage and current within those circuits, and we learned a few more advanced techniques than you might learn in a basic physics class, but other than that, it was just a simple 100 level class. Then in 17th place is Circuit Analysis 2, this was just the next class in the series. And this is where we learned AC circuits, circuits with a sinusoidal voltage input, like from a wall outlet instead of a DC voltage, like a battery. And this is where you also learn the math behind AC circuits, which involves imaginary numbers and some basic complex analysis. And that I found really cool. It was kind of like magic, seeing how imaginary numbers can be used to analyze these circuits to find you know, real values for voltages and currents and all that. And then the other thing we learned in this class is op amps or operational amplifiers. I found these to be really fun. They're integrated circuits with a lot going on inside them. They can do a lot. And for example, here's a basic op amp circuit. As you can see, it's an op amp and just two other components. And this is an integrator as it, it can integrate the input signal. Whatever function signal you put in, you're gonna get the integral out. And in this class, you learn the math of why that happens, why this circuit can essentially do calculus. Then in 18th place, going back down the list, we have circuit analysis three, which was of course the next class in the circuit analysis series. And this was really just more AC circuit stuff. It of course got more advanced, but I just like the previous class slightly more than this one. Now in 20th place, going down the list again, was analog electronics, the first 300 level class on this list. This was the last of the electronic series that I took, and it was my least favorite. I think I should have liked this class more. I think this should be higher, but I just didn't like the way it was taught, and I don't really remember much from this class. The one thing I remember is learning what or how an op amp worked. We essentially opened the hood of the op amp and looked inside to figure out how it worked. We analyzed all the transistors within the circuit, and as you can see, it's a complicated circuit. And I never got to the point where I really understood what was going on. So I, I just didn't like the class that much. Then in 16th place, we have electromagnetic fields and transmissions. And the focus of this class was killing hopes and dreams. Not really, but the biggest thing I remember from this class was transmission lines. It's probably not what you're picturing. This is where you're dealing with high frequency inputs where the wavelength of the signal is comparable or much shorter than the, uh, cables you're working with. So how I picture this is if I attach a rope to a wall, hold the end and move it up and down slowly, the whole rope's gonna move up and down, other than the end, but you know, it's gonna just move up and down, very simple. But if I start pulsing that rope, it, those waves are gonna travel to the end, then reflect, bounce back, there's gonna be constructive and destructive interference, it gets more complicated. Now imagine I have a rope attached to a thicker, bigger rope, and then I start pulsing it quickly. Well, now the waves are gonna go down, hit that second rope, and some are going to continue through, 
while some of the energy is going to reflect back. And that's going to continue. And then imagine more ropes all attached to a wall or some kind of endpoint. Then things get very confusing. That's essentially what this class is with electric signals. The math is simplified, so it's not as difficult as you might be picturing, but it is a math heavy class and it's also half a physics class. You learn about electromagnetic waves, uh, Maxwell's equations and things like that. And this is where you also learn the scariest looking thing in all of electrical engineering, which is the Smith chart. It's not the most difficult thing, at least in my opinion, but it is the scariest looking thing. And you learn how this is used to analyze those transmission line circuits where you have different loads and high frequency inputs and all that. In 15th place, we have semiconductor device electronics. And this was my first electronics class where we learn about the transistor, arguably one of the most important inventions in all of human history. There are billions of them in whatever device you are watching this video on. And the first half of this class is learning how transistors work. It was kind of like a chemistry and physics class to begin. And then uh, in the second half, we learned, you know, how to do circuit analysis with them. I'll never forget, a transistor can do two things. It can amplify a signal and it can switch electric signals, like between on and off or switch voltages between high and low. And that is why they're used so much in all of our electronics, because a high and low voltage is like a one and a zero. That's really what binary is. So that's why there's so many of them in your computer. In 14th place, we have digital electronics. This was the second of my electronics courses. And this class really involved designing logic gates using transistors. You learn about logic gates in a previous class, which are just these things that take in ones and zeros and output ones and zeros, depending on what kind of gate you have, AND gates, OR gates, and so on. But how are they really doing that? Like I said, those are high and low voltages. And then depending on the gate, you get out a high and low voltage but what's inside the logic gate that's making that happen. That's what you learn in this class. So this class is really just diving really deep into computers and electronic systems. In 13th place, classical control systems. This was my first controls class and it is a math heavy class. It's honestly almost more of a math class than an engineering class. But uh, yeah, you look at control systems. So I remember like the first example we looked at was basic cruise control where you know you have your desired speed, how fast you wanna go, you have your input speed, how fast you are going, it calculates the error, the difference, and then there's a feedback loop to determine whether the car should speed up or slow down. So that was kind of the high level of what you're looking at, but it gets so much more advanced. Lots of Laplace transform stuff, lots of complex analysis. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I remember, as much as I love math, there were a lot of times during this class where I would ask like, why are we learning this? Like, wh what does this have to do with a control system? But it was still a fun time. In 12th place, digital design. Now this was more of a computer engineering class that I really liked. So the theory in this class, you'd learn like logic gates and Boolean algebra, essentially like math with ones and zeros, binary math. But we actually got to make stuff in this class. We got to program and build stuff. So for example, one uh, project we did was making essentially a calculator. It was called a half bit adder and then a full bit adder. So we made a very basic calculator. It could only add small numbers, but we did it using logic gates. So it was a real calculator using the things that are you know, within the circuits in your graphing calculator. But I thought that was cool. And then we got to make like a seven segment display light up. We got to make games with that uh, and program it. Uh, I thought that was really fun. All right, then coming in at number 11 is programmable logic and microprocessor systems design. It's a mouthful. All this was was our Arduino class. We just did a bunch of projects using an Arduino. And this is the class that made me feel most like an engineer. This is probably what you picture electrical engineers doing. We had to do a lot of programming as we had to tell the Arduino what to do based on the inputs it received. And then there was a lot of circuit design where we had to make breadboard circuits that would be input into the Arduino. So it was like a combination of everything you've learned in electrical engineering up until this point. And we just did a bunch of projects. Some examples I wrote down, 
one group made a dog feeder that opened based on the weight of the bull. So if there wasn't enough food in the bull, the feeder would automatically open and release the dog food. Uh, my project was an alarm clock that would go off based on how much light was in the room. So it would be a light sensor alarm clock, essentially. Uh, someone made a platform that would shift to balance a ping pong ball so it wouldn't roll off. And, you know, there were plenty others. So there was so much you can do in this class. I really liked it because it made me feel like an engineer. All right, moving into our top 10, we have electromagnetic waves. I am a huge math and physics nerd, so that's why this is in the top 10. This is really just a physics class, the physics of electromagnetic waves. You learn, oh, why do AM radio waves get cut off when you go through a tunnel, but FM radio waves really don't? Or one question I remember pretty well is, you have a missile traveling to the left, uh, releasing a five gigahertz signal, uh, above a ground station that's covered in, you know, a meter of snow. What power is going to be received by the ground station? There'd be more givens, but yeah, that's the kind of idea of uh, this class. It's not really engineering. It's all physics. Then in ninth place, we have digital communication systems. Okay, so this was an elective. It was not required, but all electrical engineers were required to take three electives from a large pool of classes. And this was one I chose because it sounded interesting. The teacher was so bad, but the information was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of it was learning how to send digital information wirelessly because again, digital information is ones and zeros, high and low voltages, and you can't just send that through an antenna. But what you can do or something that you learned in this class was use a sinusoidal function and essentially encode the digital information into that, changing maybe the frequency or the amplitude. So it was very applicable and I did enjoy the information, but teacher was so bad. Okay, then in eighth place, we have antennas. So this was my one and only graduate level class. It was also an elective. And I feel like this should have been higher. It should have been number one because antenna design is what I wanted to get into. That was my first job outside of college. But this class was so much theory. And although I usually like the theory a lot, in a graduate level class, I wanted to do more of the applications. I wanted to be more practical, but it was just all calculations and, you know, figuring out gain antenna patterns. We learned about different antennas, dipole reflector, but it was just so much theory and math and calculations. Cause I feel like if somebody came up to me after that class and said like, Hey Zach, I need an antenna. So my controller can communicate with my whatever drone, I would have been like, oh, it sounds like a you problem. I would have been of no help. And I feel like after a graduate level class, you should know a little more than that. But I still did enjoy what I learned. Then in seventh place, we have discrete time signals. Okay, so a continuous time signal is just a function in time. And you can put those through a circuit with resistors, capacitors, inductors, and so on. And those circuits will do something to your signal, maybe remove frequencies that you don't want. But you can do a lot more if you sample your signal at given intervals, essentially taking a snapshot of the continuous function, and then send those samples through a computer and a program. For example, I am using Audacity right now to record my voice. And if you zoom in, it looks like a continuous function, but zoom in a little more and you realize it's not. These are just samples in time of the continuous signal that is my voice. And when you want to do something to this signal, maybe amplify, filter, reduce noise, and so on, you need a different type of math. And that's what this class is about. The mathematics of these samples, these discrete time signals. How do we filter? How do we remove noise from a sampled signal? And this is a very math heavy class. You do a lot of Fourier analysis and almost Laplace transform. It's called a Z transform, but it's essentially the uh, discrete equivalent of Fourier and Laplace analysis. And all the integrals are replaced with summations. It's a math heavy class that deals with these discrete time signals rather than continuous ones. By the way, if you want to get this Fundamentals of Engineering t-shirt, it is available at the STEM merch store. I'll put a link to that below. But now let's get to number six, which is Introduction to Communication Systems. This is simply the mathematics behind AM and FM radio. There are a lot of radio signals hitting your car antenna at once. You can turn a knob and listen to just one of those. How does that work? 
Why might there be some interference where you can listen to two radio stations at once? All that is what you cover in this class. All right, so then in fourth and fifth place, gonna talk about these together, we have electronic design and advanced analog electronics. So in our previous circuits classes, we were just given a circuit and we were asked, hey, what's the voltage, what's the current, what's maybe the circuit doing? But that was it. In these classes, it was, hey, I want a circuit that can do this. Figure out how to make it happen. And I found that to be much more fun. Our labs were way more enjoyable. Like in our electronic design lab, it was just a 10 week lab, just one project. But it had all these different stages that incorporated things from essentially every class you've taken as an electrical engineer. So it brought everything together. You had to filter, you had to amplify, you had to wirelessly transmit. You had to send through an Arduino, you had to put uh, the output on an LCD display. It was like everything all in one. In the uh, other class, the lab we had to make was a super heterodyne receiver, which is basically a radio receiver. And that also involved uh, aspects of a lot of classes all in one. So I really enjoyed these because they were design oriented. Then in third place, we have continuous time signals and systems. So this is the other class, talked about discrete time signals. This is the continuous time signals class. And I think a lot of electrical engineers would put this dead last on their list. I am a huge math nerd, so it's number three. But this is a math class. You learn Fourier analysis, which is really important for communication systems like AM and FM radio. This is the math you need for that. This was a prereq for that class, actually. And then you also learn Laplace transforms, which are especially important for uh, control systems. And I did enjoy that class too. So this was a math heavy class. I enjoy math and it was needed for the engineering classes I wanted to study further and you know take electives in. Then in second place, we have wireless communications. And this is where all my communications classes came together, including the math from my uh, continuous time signals class. It all came together so that we could build something. And the lab was my favorite part because we got to build a real radio receiver. We had to build and connect all the individual components, the mixers, the amplifiers, the filters. It was designed for high frequency signals and we got to watch that work. So that was very cool for me. And uh, then the class itself was the theory behind all those individual components. And coming in at number one is digital signal processing. This is the class that follows discrete time signals. It is an elective, but you take all that math you learn with the sampled signals and you actually do stuff with it in this class. And you can do so much. If you look at the Wikipedia page, you can see a lot of the real world applications of what you learn in this class. If you're someone who likes programming, and math, and you wanna put those together, like you wanna program, but you wanna use advanced math within your programs, this is a class for you. I remember one lab we got to do, the teacher gave us like a signal of buttons being pressed on a phone, like different numbers, and each number has a different tone to it. But he also put a lot of noise into the signal. And then we had to use all these techniques we learned in class to filter out the noise and figure out what buttons were pressed. It was a really fun project because it felt like detective work. And in this class, there were just so many moments of like, oh, that's why we learned this weird math in that discrete time, time signals class. So it all came together in this class and it was just really fun. Ironically, I didn't look for a job that involved digital signal processing because I was very much committed to the wireless communication stuff. But I think it was just, the, this class itself was just so well put together. I really liked the teacher, and I think this class was just really well designed. So that's my number one. That's my list. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. And before you go, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an educational platform home to thousands of lessons in math, science, and engineering, with new lessons being added monthly. If you're someone going into engineering or you're currently an engineering student, Brilliant has a lot to offer. For example, you can get a head start on the more advanced math classes used in engineering and see how those apply to the real world. Or you can dive into programming and computer science theory. And with their constant practice problems, along with intuitive visuals, Brilliant offers a unique experience to anyone who wants to expand their math, science, and engineering knowledge. And you can now try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. 
Just go to brilliant.org slash Zach Starr or click the link in the description below. Plus the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. With that, going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below and I'll see you all in the next video.